From Jerry Seinfeld to Dave Chappelle, comedians have been calling out cancel culture and political correctness among woke audiences. But actor Seth Rogen thinks they should stop complaining and just accept it. It, 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 just, it. Saying terrible things is bad. So if you said something terrible, then that's something you should confront in some way, shape, or form. Um, I don't think that's cancel culture. That's you saying something terrible, if, if, if that's what you've done. Well, he's spine free. Greg, you have a backbone and you're hilarious, unlike Seth Rogen. What do you say? Well, I think probably the dumbest argument anyone could make when they're dismissing a concern is that it's never been a problem for me. So I've heard people use that argument when there are true claims of sexual harassment and when there are false claims of sexual harassment. It works on any side. It's like, well, you know, it's never been a problem for me. It's basically translate into do not look to me for any support when you get in trouble. You saw how he ditched his best friend, James Franco, who is a sleazy guy. But Seth Rogen knew he was a sleazy guy. He worked with him for years until, until Franco got too sleazy, and then Rogen just dropped him like a hot potato. Not a very good analogy. But anyway, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Seth doesn't have to worry for a few reasons. You know, he is completely inoffensive lately. He's never said a shocking thing in his life, except maybe turning down a joint. He's, in, he's very liberal, so that will offer him some cover. But, uh, but there's one thing that he might have to revisit, and that is the rape scene in Observe and Report, uh, which uh, many would say was played for laughs. And uh, I think maybe he forgot about that. I don't know, but that's something that may end up haunting him, although I don't think he should be canceled for it because he's playing a character. Dana? Well, first of all, I noticed that he said it on Good Morning Britain. <gasps> um, and, uh, of course, we know there's uh, no First Amendment there, right? Yeah. So they have issues. Um, but also, if if I, I'd rather be on the side of Dave Chappelle, who I think has spoken so well about this, uh, Kevin Hart, Jerry Seinfeld, and Chris Rock has also said something. I would, rather, I would love to see all of them debate this one. That would be like an intelligence squared debate I would go to. <laughs> Juan. Well, I think being rude to people, you know, intentionally demeaning, bullying people, I don't think it's funny. I don't think it's, I, I, I agree with him on this point. If that's what you're doing, you know, you have to, you're going to have to pay the price. The thing about American comedy at its best, it does cross lines. And mm -hmm. that's why it holds up a mirror to American society. And that's why we love American comics from, you know, Lenny Bruce to, you know, all the way to Chris Rock. Uh, that's, that's the best of American comedy. But if you're going to look at cancel culture, Dagan, I mean, you look at it in terms of the politics of today, where cancel culture is a big grievance on the right. Well, Liz Cheney just got canceled for speaking the truth. <laughs> Meanwhile, Marjorie Green Taylor, she's like making Hitler like comments, but she doesn't get canceled. So you got to start and think, well, exactly, are we talking about comedy in the American tradition, or are we talking about something that's just fits your political taste at the moment and you're protecting? We're talking about in comedy, Jesse. Nothing is off limits because humor and laughter actually make the worst situations, even tragedies, bearable. Right. So I think Greg touched on it a little bit. Rogan's talking about himself. His pal Franco was accused of a lot of misconduct by women who were kind of maybe even 17. And at the time, Rogan made a joke about it. Mm -hmm. And now, years later, after the allegations have become a lot more credible and a, a lot more, he's now apologized for making that joke. But co comedians aren't complaining about cancel culture. They're complaining about woke culture. Because woke culture kills comedy and makes everything boring. Chris Rock said it. They're not getting any edgy material anymore. When the edge is here, everyone just hangs out here now. Or the edge has come back so far, no one's pushing it. Juan's right. I mean, Pryor, uh, Eddie Murphy, George Carlin, yes. they're not complaining about their jokes didn't age well. Their <laughs> jokes aged beautifully like Dana Perino. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need? What do you need? Anything. Uh, Actually, I do have a favor. I'll talk to you after the show. Okay. <laughs> I can't tell if that was a compliment or not. It was. I mean, of course it was. <laughs>
I'll just end with this. You mentioned Pryor and, and Carlin and Eddie Murphy and Lenny Bruce or Joan Rivers or Paul Mooney, who just died. The This bumbling bag of cowardice that we've been talking about this segment, he will never be mentioned alongside those greats, ever. The Fastest Seven, it. up next. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.